studio, we commiserate with the family, both nuclear and extended. All right, to our next story. You know, with the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, under investigation and those, and, and horse cleaning, if you like, exchange rate, a record high of uh, 950 naira to the dollar, uh, an inflation rate of a runaway 28, 25.8%. President Bolatinubu recruited the experienced uh, former city banker Olayemi Kadosu as the new governor of the Apex Bank in Nigeria. He is to be assisted by other heavyweights like Philip Ikeazo, Mohamed Dachijo, renowned accountant Bala Mohamed, and young and daring M.M. Osara as deputy governors. It's a, a, a new broom. This, this is putting paid to acting governor Fola Shodun Adebisi Shonubi, right? That's, that's what it means. Mm -hmm. And um, from reports, the suspended governor has resigned. That is, Godwin Mifeli resigned last month. Yes, that's good. Um, we've had a lot of um, back and forth stories. Virtually everybody who is at the top in the CBN has been invited by the Department of State Services to answer one question or the other. I said it when Emefiele was arrested that a lot of <clears throat> people at the top in CBN will also have to go with him. Because these are people who are his lieutenants. They work together. They take decisions together. Even if the proposals emanate from him, mm. they will discuss it. It can be something we will just sign in his office and pass on. And since all of those policies, none of them had the courage to speak out and quit, mm. then it means they are signatories to it. That's the meaning. And that's why there has been this. This was squeezed, that was squeezed, mm. released, squeezed, released. And then some of those proposals, one of them on the Naira was actually traced to the acting CBN governor. So, meaning that is involved mm. in a way, even if the implementation was largely out of his control. Yeah. But in all of those, I think for me, we have a, a reason to rejoice because somebody who has a track record has been appointed as governor. But Nigerians should also be careful not to expect a miracle. Yeah. Because that is what we always do. We want something that has gone down. Are, are you saying we are an impatient people? People? Very much so, sir. Mm. We want something that we want an overnight now, now, now. miracle. Now, now, now. That's why you see a, a lot of us end up with clerics who deceive us because they know what we want. We want miracles. And they give you. Uh, well, they give us what we want. <laughs> but, so what, I'm, what am I saying is we should give this new team the opportunity to settle down. Nigeria's economy has defied a lot of logic. And in trying to find logic in this, these guys, we need time. They need, we need to be patient with them. These figures we are hearing now, mm. if somebody thinks that because Adoso has been appointed and on Monday, dollar will come to 700 or 600, mm. it's, a, it's a huge lie. And that's what Nigerians should have at the back of their minds. That we are not going to have this resolved in one, two, three years. It's going to be because a process. It doesn't say, Cardoso does not have a magic wand. It doesn't. It's just the real economy that he knows. Yeah. Well, yeah, we can say, given giving his antecedents, mm. he's, he's the right man for the job. Mm. But what is on the table is daunting. Yeah. I think, um, first of all, 
I think it was a good development that the federal government decided to look for somebody not within the system. Given the experience we have had in the past few months, you don't need any suits here to tell you that the CBN currently as we have it is in a mess. It has been heavily politicized and then deeply engrossed in partisan politics. We should not be associated with any central bank of any country. The situation where you had the CBN sitting on that seat, at the same time, V to contest for the president of the country without leaving his position, and also raising 100 million naira, you know, from so-called uh, rice growers. You yeah, know, yeah, which uh, could well, be... Well, just a minute. Yeah. We have Anna Dekunle reaching us from okay. the state. Adekunle, I greet you. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, sir. Good yeah, afternoon. welcome. Yeah, good afternoon, gentlemen, in the studio. Good, good afternoon. afternoon, sir. Yes. I just want to draw a little opinion on uh, Mubad case. Okay. And then it's just as simple as Nigerians should not take this overboard. Because the young man himself is not disciplined. The way he has abused drugs and lead to his death. So thorough investigation should be carried out. I'm not opposed to that. But his own personal life mm. is not a disciplined young man. Okay. Thank mm. you very much. I think we'll many thanks. Yeah, we were saying. Yeah. So you, we had a situation where, you know, the CBN was more or less performing commercial functions, you know, dabbling into politics, you know, becoming a, a, a tool, a suspected tool being used by, you know, people in power to further political interest and was becoming very active in the electoral process of the country. So the, that uh, action of this, you know, the activities of the CBN in the past months led to the destabilization of the economy. Let's uh, uh, clear yeah. this, this question. Yeah. So. Unasked question. Okay. Was Emifile right in Angling to be president? Well, as a Nigerian citizen, he has that right. But one would have expected that the first point of call would have been to resign. You know? And then my own concern was that, you, you, you know, saying that you raised 100 million naira, you know, contribution from those who are supposed to have received loan. In other countries, that should be seen as kickback. Mm. And I think it is morally repugnant. Okay. So the, the point is that um, the CBN is currently in a mess. And the CBN needs to go back to its core functions of stabilizing the economy, providing advice you know, to the federal government, and also uh, maintaining pr uh, inter I mean, international reserve of the country to, to be able to stabilize you know, the Nigerian currency. So I think and I hope that the new CBN governor will make a difference. But I'm not over enthusiastic because when Emefele came in, there are all sort of you know, assumptions, oh, he went to the best university in the world and all that. Mm -hmm. But after some time, you know, we just discovered that going to university, the best university in the world, it's not, it does not make you a good leader. You know, it has to do with conscience, having good conscience. What I'm doing, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it Am I serving the interests of, of the people? Mm. Those are the key things that are important. So I'm fascinated by the credentials of the new CBN governor. Yeah. But I'm not carried away. By, I want to see what policies he wants to come out with in the next few months to ensure that the CBN as a strategic partner you know, in bringing back the Nigerian economic renaissance, you will be able to put certain policies in place that will reclaim the flooding forces of the Nigerian economy. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dr. you know, I'm rather interested in talking about the deputy governors, okay. Philip Ikeazo, Mohamed Datijo, Balabello, and M. M. Uh, the spread. Well, We've always tried they're, they're to, supposed to be experts in that different fields. We've always tried to um, ensure even spread of uh, appointees in this kind of situation. I mean, that's good. But more importantly, the capacity to deliver. Anybody who is appointed into a position like this and cannot look at the president and tell him, you are wrong. We are not going to run that way. 
that person has failed from day one. Okay. Because if this is compensation for them, there was a video before the president was sworn in. Where he spoke about a few guys that he said he was going to bring on board. One of them was Cardoso. He equally mentioned Waliedo and spoke about how they did it in Lagos. That gives uh, Dutton, that just a minute. Uh, we don't want to keep keep him waiting. Dutton, I mean, Mohammed is reaching us from Lagos here. Mohammed, good good yeah. afternoon to you. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, my own question is that all of those old people are bringing them out. Can't you see a young graduate come on become a city governor? If Cardoso had worked in Lagos before, what is the achievement? Tell us what is the achievement. The only thing you have to be telling us that is also, but what we need now is we need a, an urgent inflation. We are fed up. What kind of government are you running with us? But, but, but Kado, 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 uh, Mohammed, Kadoso is not an old man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an old man. <laughs> and, uh, well, we, we are talking uh, about... Uh, uh, I also think uh, experience, experience yeah, matters. Yeah, he's... Uh, his uh, bio is not necessarily intimidating. While while I said so, he is not inebriated by his. But can he do the job? That that's the issue. That's the issue. Because that is the real thing that we have to deal with. Because as as the caller just said, being governor of a central bank of any country yeah. is not a child's play. It's, it's quite different from what was done in Lagos. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And. One of the yardstick with which we'll quickly know whether we are going to have an impact will be tomorrow. It has just been announced. And if, the Senate, the if, Senate has to claim? Yes. If that is name does not bring a check to some things in the market tomorrow, if it doesn't bring a check to some of those things in the market tomorrow, then we are going to have issues. Mm. Because his name will be able to put some things in place. Okay. In other countries where you have, this man has been appointed head of the economic team, that day something will happen in the market. Especially at the stock exchange? Yes, stock exchange. Yes, that's mm. where I'm referring to. Mm. So let's see what happens. Let's see if there's going to be a check in some of these things. But you know, you talked about the, the figures that are not helping matters at They're all. They're not at all. A near 950 naira to a dollar, and a 25.8% uh, inflation rate. Yeah. That's why I said they've got a lot of job to do. Mm. It's not so much about who they are. I mean, where, where they went to school. And that. We've gone past that because our economy, our economy has defied those logic in the past. We've had top people and in the economy as Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, CBN Governor, and yet in the last 10 years, we have been going down the slope. So we want people who can understand this economy. The, the, the dynamics. Not the economy of the developed world. Not the economy of the World Bank. Not the economy of the International Monetary Fund. Mm. But the economy of Nigeria. Why? Because, because a lot of the things that are happening within our economy, they are largely sabotage. Some people who want to be richer than the whole country. That's just it. Go and, and what and, what and, has and happened with the dollar? They, they have not. They, they, they have not. They are not ready to. They are not ready to. They, the, the round tripping was the first thing that put us in trouble. When we say some of these things, even to my own children that I consider young, they are alarmed. That so a twenty-one year old now or twenty years plus. I'm telling her the story that in well, it was after even when we got to her, dollar was in the region of 100, 125 naira. And when are we talking? When, when was then we are talking about some 2009, 2010, and between then and now, 13 years, see where we are. Well, well you know. The Naira cannot be propped up in value, mm. except we return to being a producing country. Yeah. So uh, goods and services. Mm. The central bank must play a, a key part here. Yeah. You know.
There's no doubt about that. Let me just quickly respond to the gentleman who spoke about you know, the subject we are discussing. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that it's from a, uh, an impressive, he has an impressive um, academic record. And uh, yeah, his family background, I think, uh, is quite uh, fascinating. His father was actually the first Akatan general, indigenous, the first indigenous Akatan general of Nigeria. That was 1963 and the first uh, managing director of, and vice chairman of Barclays Bank. You remember Barclays Bank? Of your? Of Global Standard. OK. You know, so I mean, we can't, it's, yes, and it was actually from, uh, you know, it was during his time, yeah. a lot of foundations were laid for the economic transformation of Nigeria. And the, the well, nickname at that time was Headmaster, because you can't take any document to him without, if there's no cost, no costing. That document will not be so. Well, well, well let, let me please a little pause because uh, Kazim is reaching us from, from Kaduna. Okay. Kazim, I'm glad you, you can join us. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. Uh, so long as uh, what is happening in Nigeria will continue in terms of not punishing uh, anybody that is wrong, you will hear uh, someone is being. And like that, you are here, someone is in the court, two years, three years. Look at what happened under former President Muhammad Buhari, someone who was meant to fight corruption with all his apparatus and powers he has as president. But unfortunately, who, the people that he indicted, people like former governor of Blanche State and all that, mm. they were released as pardon. So someone will do the same thing over and over again without uh, getting any punishment. So we'll be just sticking around one corner without yeah. any yeah. progress. Mm. That's my take. I, I, Wale, I we must yeah. emphasize that we must develop the habit of punishing, as I always say, bad behavior, wrongdoing, Absolutely. because the laws are there. Yeah. If there are no sanctions for bad behavior and no reward for good behavior, the society can never make progress. Mm. And then uh, when we are talking about what we expect from this new CBN governor, he needs to rebuild the trust that has collapsed between the people and the banking sector. Huh. A lot of people don't trust the banking system any longer. Check out how many people use the ATM. You are debited. To retrieve back your money is a problem. Mm. Check out people that are being duped, and those who dupe them have accounts being run by certain well, banks. As, as we sit here, as yeah. we all sit here, yeah. I don't know when you last took money from the ATM. <laughs> well, let me tell you that since February, they took 20,000 naira from me, one bank. I was debited. The pharmacist was not credited. Opting now to retrieve the 20,000 naira back since mm -hmm. February is a problem. And I checked the records. This funds run into millions. When you go to banks, you see a lot of people clean up to get back their funds, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about having trust in the CBN. The CBN needs to sanction erring banks. Mm. There is no politician that sees money without involvement of certain bank officials. When you are doing money laundering, uh, drug money, those things pack through the banking system. Yeah. So we need to sanitize the banking system. We need to bring public trust back. People, what people are doing now is that they withdraw their funds. Because at the time you ask everybody to come and deposit their funds, you took the money again, businesses collapsed, and nothing has happened since then. So the new CBN governor has a lot of you know, things to do. But one of those things, which is very critical, is to ensure that people begin to build trust in the, ba in the banking industry once again. Mm. Dr. What, well, what, what more can we add? What we can add is that, like you said and he said also, the CBN must look at those drivers of the economy, especially manufacturing, mm. not just giving handouts to briefcase farmers who have gotten millions or not billions or trillions and are still unable to supply us rice to crash the price. Who have gotten billions, trillions to produce cassava for our gari and all the rest for yam. And we still can't see yam. A tuba of yam now, I'm sure you know how much it is. Mm -hmm. And this, we don't need to import things we do it. not, because we have more, more than enough to, to so grow. We need to 
we need to check that instead of just giving free money yeah. to briefcase farmers. Let's do it the right way. Especially foreign exchange. People you know? genuinely need to import raw materials. They must have access to 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 to, to, to so we, we, we even need to, we even, to people with portfolio who we even sell need to start because, looking at yeah. those raw materials that we have here mm. and focus on them. Yeah. I've said this a couple of times on this program. We need Ajaukuta to work. The yeah, moment Delta all last, all, Delta, all those steel companies, they need to work so that we can begin to fabricate. All the machines they use for processing gari, for processing this, they are being brought from outside the country. Even the ones yeah. they use in the poultry, the, the, the cage for, for um, animals, they still bring them from outside the country. It, and these are things we can do Interestingly, we are locally. going to discuss poultry farming in yeah. the course of uh, the afternoon. You know, Wally, quickly, uh, in 30 seconds, the president announced a single window for, for, for Forex. Yeah. So you think the new man at the helm will go to town on, on that? Yeah, I, I, I hope so. That's a very uh, important strategic intervention because what we find out is that um, people, a lot of people trade in Forex. That's their means of livelihood. And they are, they are millionaires, if not billionaires. Mm. But there are people who genuinely need Forex. You know, and but they don't have access to them. Yeah. There are genuine businessmen who want to invest into production. They can't have access to loans. There are people who just get loans because they settle some bank officials and they don't necessarily need those loans. So we hope the CBN governor will sit down to do a new roadmap in order to be able to bring back Nigeria. You know, all right, the all right then. Right uh, path of development. Uh, at least we, we are retooling. Yeah. Let's retool properly. Yeah. To our next story, you know, the number of supposed illegal refining sites.